Hey, this is Dr. Ben White, host of the Rational Wellness Podcast. I talk to the leading health and nutrition experts and researchers in the field to bring you the latest in cutting edge health information. Subscribe to the Rational Wellness Podcast for weekly updates. And to learn more, check out my website, drwhites.com. Thanks for joining me and let's jump into the podcast. Hello, Rational Wellness Podcasters. Today, it will just be me speaking and I'll be speaking about longevity. And so we're all, many of us are trying to figure out how we can best live longer, healthier lives. And there are various ways to try to study this. One way is to look at various animal studies to see what sorts of dietary interventions, um, pharmaceutical interventions, other factors can affect our ability to um, live longer. It's hard to study these things in humans because humans live so long that you have to do a 100-year study. Now, another way to get a sense of what's going to be beneficial in helping us to live longer, healthier lives is by studying centenarians. And so centenarians are people who live to be 100 or older. And there have been a number of uh, analyses of this, including Dan Buettner's The Blue Zones, which is now a documentary on cable. And so this looks at parts of the world where people tend to live the longest and look at the common characteristics we could see in terms of diet and lifestyle and other factors. And so there's a new study that was published this September, 2023 in the journal Giro Science. This study is entitled Blood Biomarker Profiles and Exceptional Longevity. Comparison of Centenarians and Non-Centenarians in a 35-year follow-up of the Swedish Amoris cohort. So this is actually uh, looking back over 35 years and studied people who lived to be 100 or older compared to people who didn't. And so it looked at a number of blood biomarkers. It looked at total cholesterol, glucose, creatinine, uric acid, liver enzymes, albumin, iron, and um, iron status. A number of the uh, outcomes are what we would have expected. So we, we see that Lower glucose levels are associated with increased likelihood of living to be 100 or older. And so this is not surprising. Higher glucose levels means that your body's not processing your carbohydrates properly and that excess glucose is floating around your bloodstream, which is inflammatory. This tends to lead to diabetes, uh, non alcoholic fatty liver. Uh, higher glucose levels is associated with inflammation, with increased risk of cancer. And so not surprising that um, higher glucose levels uh, make it less likely that you'll live to be 100. And the difference in glucose levels between centenarians and non-centenarians was pretty significant. Now, um, I've heard a popular podcaster comment about this study and draw some conclusions, which I think are probably not the right conclusions to draw. And the main conclusions that were drawn was that this study seemed to show that higher levels of cholesterol are associated with higher likelihood of becoming a centenarian. And so the conclusion that was drawn by this other podcaster was that um, it's better to have higher levels of cholesterol that that will increase your longevity. And I'm not sure that that's the right conclusion to draw from this study. And I'll give you some reasons why. Number one, this study looked at total cholesterol levels. We already know that to assess your risk of cardiovascular disease, to assess your risk of atherosclerosis, and your likelihood of having a heart attack or a stroke, total cholesterol levels are not the most important lipid parameter to look at. LDL is a better measure than total cholesterol. LDL particle number is a better 
assessment tool than calculated LDL as we see in a standard lipid profile. A lot of us now think that ApoB is a better measure than, um, than LDL particle number as probably the best overall measure for cardiovascular risk. So uh, ApoB better than LDL particle number, better than LDL calculated, which is better than total cholesterol. There's some arguments, some, some of the data indicates that small dense LDL may be the biggest factor or oxidized LDL. So there's definitely some other factors, but the bottom line is total cholesterol is generally recognized as not the best measure for a cardiovascular risk. Number two, when we look at the cohort of, pop, of people, men and women, with total cholesterol levels, they break it down by decades. And we see uh, for men age 64 to 74, 75 to 84, 85 to 99, and the same for women. And we'll see that um, to begin with, the difference in the total cholesterol levels between centenarians and non-centenarians was slight, a lot less than the glucose levels, which is very significant. These are very small differences. Second of all, if we look very carefully at the data, we'll see that while higher total cholesterol levels uh, were more common in centenarians than non-centenarians, say in men 75 to 84. In men who are a little bit younger, age 64 to 74, actually lower levels of total cholesterol were more associated with centenarians. So I think, and, and the same thing we'll see with women, women age 85 to 99, had slightly higher levels of um, total cholesterol, but women uh, who were 64 to 74 actually had lower levels. Uh, women who were age 64 to 74, who were more likely to become centenarians, actually had lower total cholesterol levels. So I think the conclusion to draw is that throughout uh, a significant portion of your life, all things considered, it's better to have lower ApoB levels, which also probably um, is associated with lower total cholesterol levels, and that that will reduce your risk of cardiovascular disease, reduce your risk of dying from a heart attack or stroke. However, once you get into the older years, uh, you've survived the higher risk heart attack years, which are probably 40 to 60 or 50 to 70. Now, the biggest risk of, um, of mortality has to do with things like frailty, falling and, and, and breaking bones, um, dementia. Um, from degenerative um, neurological diseases. And here, having overall greater vitality, people who are eating a healthier diet and, and may have slightly higher cholesterol levels may be somewhat protective of brain function. And people at that age who have lower cholesterol levels may be more of an indicator of not eating as much healthy food, more associated with frailty, more likelihood of falling and breaking the hip or increased risk of uh, uh, chronic degenerative neurological diseases. So I think the conclusion is, is as you get older, especially into your 80s and 90s, having slightly higher cholesterol levels is probably not such a bad thing. But when you're younger, having lower cholesterol levels is. Now, the other marker that was also somewhat surprising was iron. And I think it's a similar story to um, the cholesterol levels, because while we do see, so, so the thing about iron is iron, if it's in high levels, 
increases your risk for having a heart attack or a stroke, increases your cardiovascular risk. And once again, when we parse out the decades of life, we see that, for example, men who are age 64 to 74, having a slightly lower iron level increases your risk of becoming a centenarian, whereas at 85 to 99, it's the opposite. And the same thing we see with women, that women 85 to 99 having higher iron levels is associated with um, increased likelihood of being a centenarian. But say 10 years younger, a 75 to 84 having um, lower iron levels is more associated with becoming a centenarian. So once again, I think that when you get to those older years, Iron status is more a marker of overall vitality. Are you still active? Are you still eating a healthy diet? Are you getting enough nutrients? Do you have sufficient nutrient status? And I think those people have greater vitality, are less likely to be frail, and um, having that um, stability and 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 strength uh having greater bone mass having greater muscle mass is more important in those older years and so i think that's really the conclusion to draw and not that don't i i i don't think that the conclusion to draw is don't worry about cholesterol levels it doesn't really matter higher cholesterol levels are really healthier i don't think that's the case but i do think if you're 90 years old, you shouldn't be worried about your cholesterol levels. That I, I agree with and probably not overall a great benefit to be, say, taking a statin medication age 90 when you probably would rather have the additional cholesterol to support brain health. And um, if cholesterol is going to lead to a heart attack, it's usually a process that's going to take decades to occur. So overall. Once again, the conclusions are, if you want to increase your likelihood of having a long, healthy life, generally speaking, lower levels of cholesterol are better until you get into those older years. So thank you and see you next week. Thank you for making it all the way through this episode of the Rational Wellness Podcast. For those of you who enjoy listening to the Rational Wellness Podcast, I would certainly appreciate it if you could go to Apple Podcasts or Spotify and give us a five-star ratings and review. That way, more people will discover the Rational Wellness Podcast. And I wanted to let everybody know that I do have some openings for new patients so I can see you for a functional medicine consultation for specific health issues like gut problems, autoimmune diseases, cardiometabolic conditions, or for an executive health screen or, and to help you promote longevity and take a deeper dive into some of those factors that can lead to chronic diseases along the way. Um, and that usually means we're going to do um, some more detailed lab work, stool testing, sometimes urine testing, um, and we're going to look at uh, a lot more details to get a, a better picture of your overall health from a preventative functional medicine perspective. So if you're interested, please call my Santa Monica White Sports Chiropractic and Nutrition Office at 310-395-3111 and we can set you up for a new consultation for functional medicine. I'll talk to everybody next week.